Hi, we're Graham and Tracy, the Flying Finneys. We're on a quest to travel to 60 countries before we turn 60. Sri Lanka is country number two for us and we'd like to give a huge shout out to all of our new viewers who loved the last video where we compared some of the incredibly affordable luxury hotels in Colombo. In this video, we continue our whirlwind adventure around this amazing country, traveling by train to Harbarana and then on to Dambulla so that we can visit the iconic rock fortress of Sigiriya. We were also blown away by the historic beauty of Polonnaruwa and the temple caves of Dambulla. There are really no words to describe how amazing this is. So join us on the next leg of our adventure as we explore more breathtaking beauty in Sri Lanka. Getting to Dambulla involved both a train to get from Colombo to the small township of Harbarana and a taxi onwards to Dambulla. It was our first experience of train travel in Sri Lanka and we loved it. In hindsight, we would have left earlier in the day, so we weren't trying to find a taxi in the dark, but watching the sun set out the side of the train was spectacular. And the cost of travel for the three and a half hour trip was also super cheap. Despite the extra taxi cost, Dambulla gave us a great central location to visit some breathtaking attractions and the following morning we struck out early to visit the iconic rock fortress of Sigiriya. This is a site of historical and archaeological significance that is dominated by this massive column of granite that is approximately 180 metres or nearly 600 feet high. On a small plateau about halfway up the side of the rock, he built a gateway to the palace in the form of an enormous lion. The name of this place, Sigiriya, is derived from this structure. Sigiriya meaning the lion rock. Today, it's a UNESCO listed World Heritage Site as it is one of the best preserved examples of ancient urban planning. You like my red sweaty face? So I did make it all the way up the 1200 steps. Yeah, it is a, it's definitely worth the 1200 steps and the sweat because look at this view. So the view from up here is just wow. The 1200 steps is actually pretty reasonable to get up, uh, although it is very steep. But just looking out over all of this vantage, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It is worth the $30 US for each person to come up here. And we're just very lucky today that there aren't too many people there's no heavy rain, it's just a light mist and that just cools everything down beautifully. We are now standing at the Southern Palace. There are four different quadrants to the overall fort. And these beautiful mountains in the background are absolutely stunning. Not surprising. We are ticking off another UNESCO World Heritage Site today. Going down is much more fun than going up for me. <laughs> I'm walking across this next section fine because I'm just telling myself that I, I'm trying not to envisage what it actually looks like. So this is literally sticking out the side of the rock. It's like a big overhang. So as long as it doesn't get too narrow and I don't look down too much, I should be fine. So this is the audience hall for the old palace on the top of this boulder. This fortress was an absolute highlight of our time in Sri Lanka, but we were almost speechless at the unexpected beauty of the next place we visited.
Just south of Dambulla was our 18th UNESCO World Heritage Site. Rising over 160 metres over the surrounding plains, the five caves in this complex house over 150 statues of the Buddha, and the surrounding wall murals cover an area of some 2,100 square metres. But after our morning at Sigiriya, the climb to the top was challenging. The climb up is made much more enjoyable because of all the monkeys along the way entertaining us. These stairs have seen a lot of wear and tear over the years. Ooh, monkey, who scared you? Some of these guys. Did you scare her away? What's going on? Look at that scenery though. It's worth the walk. Quite incredible. When we arrived, I'm not sure we were ready for what awaited us. When you first enter, this is what you see. The beautiful face with the sunlight coming through the cave entrance. There are really no words to describe how amazing this is. Every inch of the wall and ceiling is covered with the most intricate painting. Again, it just looks like this fabulous, rich tapestry that's hanging loosely. And if this wasn't enough, there was one last place we had to visit. We thought we'd jump on a bus and head to the ancient city of Polonnaruwa. It's around about a one and a half, two hour trip on the bus. It cost us around about a dollar each and now we're in these magnificent ruins of the old city of Polonnaruwa. The city itself covers around about two and a half kilometers in each direction. And so getting here, you have to firstly grab your ticket from the museum it's around about 20 US dollars per person and then the easiest way to get around is via a tuk-tuk which for us cost around about 2,500 rupees. Let's go for a visit. This is the audience area or reception area for the old palace. It's a bit more fully restored as you can see. There's still some columns there. You can actually try and imagine what it would have been like. And look at these beautiful garden areas. It's really peaceful in here. A bit slippery with all the moss on the bricks, but um, just gotta be careful where you step. Now I'm no ancient historian, but it's nice to notice the details. I don't know what they all mean. There's beautiful elephant carvings down in this um, pedestal. And then up here, it's what looks like lion carvings. We're just on our way to the second site of the day. I was really impressed. All of the architecture, it's really well preserved given its age from the 10th century. The, um, all of the carvings and the stone, really well preserved. So this is the next stop in our tour of the ancient city of Polonnaruwa. And this is a tablet. It, it's almost like a book. There's a full translation of the inscription that is contained on the top of the tablet. And essentially it talks about how peace was brought to this land um, and a lot of detail about the king himself and the actions that he took at the time. Now we would have shown you a little more of this historic area, but one of us lost our entry tickets. So that was the end of our travels in Dambulla. However, we have to give a shout out to our homestay while we were visiting this fantastic area. Not only because our rooms were great value and well presented, 
but also because our host took us for a ride in the coolest car we had seen in some time. Thanks for joining us in our adventures around this beautiful and iconic area. And if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. Join us next week as we travel south to Kandy. We get a bird's eye view from a massive Buddha statue in the hills and visit the temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic before jumping on one of the most popular trains in the world.